Hi, this is Simon Obstel, and welcome to this introduction to Hawaii Autofix. Now, back in 2013, I released a product called Tokyo Reanimator for fixing dead pixels, and it's proved pretty popular ever since. But I've always felt that there ought to be a more streamlined, automated way of doing this. So I teamed up with Rob McIntosh at Hawaii, and together we've developed Hawaii Autofix. I'm very pleased with what we've come up with. Autofix takes a boring chore and turns it into a process that's fast, effective, and even quite a lot of fun. So let me show you what I mean. So I've got this great looking drone shot of these mountains and unfortunately it's got this dead pixel and that's what we're going to use Autofix to fix. So I'm going to come over to the browser and I'm going to grab it, drop it onto my clip. OK, so the first thing we need to do is we need to isolate that pixel there. So I'm going to click on the header for the effect and it gives us this repair target on screen control and what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that over the dead pixel. So then what we want to do is we want to come over and hit the zoom key. You can find that right at the top of the inspector here. So we're going to hit that and that brings up the HUD, which is this on screen display that allows us to focus in on the area that we're trying to repair. So in this instance, as quite often, I've not managed to hit that dead pixel bang on with my initial pick. And that's why the effect is bypassed by default. You can see the bypass which is enabled here. And that's because we need to make sure that we've lined it up into the center of this guide here. And we can do that using this fine tune control here down at the bottom right. So I can drag that. And if I hold down the command key, I can constrain it even more finely. So now I've got the dead pixel lined up in the center of my guide and I can come back and I can turn off the bypass switch and you'll probably guess the dead pixel vanishes. Job done. But I actually want to skip back and talk about another question and that is the repair mask. Now you see I've talked about this guide in the center. That is in fact the guide for the mask so I'm going to turn on bypass again, just while we talk about this. And you can see that the mask is more or less the right size in this instance. It might need to be a little bit larger. But if it does need to be larger, we can either come over and use the mask size slider like that. Or if we prefer, we can pick a value from this drop down menu here. You see three by three is too small. Five by five is just about safe, but seven by seven is probably going to be the better answer there. So make sure you set up your repair mask so it's actually fixing the, the area that you need to fix. So let's turn bypass back off again and we've got a nice fix. But that's probably not necessarily going to work for the entirety of the shot. And you'll notice that as I scrub through the timeline, this gizmo down here at the bottom left is giving me a rough indication of which frames I might want to take a second look at. So this, for example. So at this point, we're getting a few too many of the brighter pixels and not enough of the darker pixels. So basically how the plugin works is that it draws in pixels from the surrounding area, the area surrounding the mask, and uses those to replace the dead pixel. So in this case, it's picking up too much from the left-hand side here, this brighter area. So if we come down to the replace section here, you can see we've got two controls, one for brighter pixels and another for darker pixels. And in this instance, I'm just going to dial back the brighter and dial up the darker. And then very, very easily, I've got an instant fix for that little local problem. What I would want to do, though, is to keyframe those adjustments on either side of the problem so that I'm not applying that correction globally. But let me show you a different and even snazzier way of fixing this. So I'm going to reset that replace. And down here, if I scroll down a little bit, you'll see we've got a sampling section. So basically, this is allowing me to adjust the influence of the various different pixels as they contribute to the replace. So in this instance, we really want the pixels from the right hand side to be the replace pixels rather than any from the left. So an easy way of doing this is to come over to this sample menu here 
and pick one of the options. So I'm going to select the right hand pixels. You can see from the icon exactly what we're doing. We're picking those three right hand pixels. So select that and instantly that has given me a really nice perfect fix of that. And obviously these sliders update depending on which sample you've picked, but you can also just use them manually. So you'll notice that that top left is obviously the one causing the most problems and we don't want to be using those pixels. So again, when you're using this option to, to fix a local problem like this one, you'll need to keyframe before and after the bit that you're locally fixing. And then once you've completed work on the repair, all you need to do is to turn off the zoom switch and you should be good to go. So let me just come back and discuss a few of the other features. Let's come right up to the top here. You've got controls for the zoom level. So how close we're actually looking at the problem area. This doesn't actually affect anything to do with the actual fix. It's just a, it's just a view option. And we've also got a view menu where we can select either the repair mask or the pixels that we're using to create the repair. So let's switch back to the effect view. So next, let's take a look at the repair mask section. Let's actually look at the mask. So this is showing us the mask of the area that we're replacing. So as you can see, we can adjust the softness. We can adjust the roundness. By default, this is set to completely circular, but we can go the opposite way and make it completely square. We can adjust the hardness if we want to remove some of the transparent edge pixels. And we can scale the mask independently on X and on Y. And then of course we can rotate it. And this is often quite a useful strategy. So now let's move on and take a look at the replace section. The replace slider determines how far out Autofix will go in its search for replacement pixels. So if I turn on the replace guide, it shows us the extent of that area and we can adjust it as required. Now we've already seen how the brighter and darker pixel sliders use brighter or darker pixel values for the replacement, but there's also a combine pixel slider which uses all of the surrounding pixels. And these three controls can actually be used in any combination as required. And you'll notice that each of these sliders has an accompanying smooth control, which provides for further fine tuning of the replacement pixels. But we've also got a manual option here. And if I turn down the replace, just to cancel all of this out, so we're kind of back to, to, to nothing as it were, what you can do is you can use just a basic offset function there. So off, I'm offsetting the X there to, to find the replacement pixels manually. And you can scale them up. You can adjust the saturation, the gain, for example. So it's worth taking a look at these manual options if the automatic process isn't quite doing what you want it to do. So finally, let's take a look at the HUD section. So let's open that up. And you'll see that we've got a whole bunch of controls for customizing the interface to your personal preference. And I'm just going to highlight the main features. So in the top left hand corner, we've got the navigation view. And if I just enlarge that, you can see that it gives us an overview of where we are within the shot as a whole, while we continue to work on the detail. We've already briefly touched on the gizmo in the bottom left hand corner, which flags up problems that might need fixing. And at the top right hand corner, we've got a graph which displays the same type of information in a different format. And of course, at the bottom right, we've got the fine tune controls that we looked at earlier. So all of these elements can be turned off or scaled or otherwise customized to suit your taste. And I should also point out that if you're working with square or vertical footage, there are HUD presets that you can load that are optimized for those ratios. And of course, you can use this menu to save your own presets. And finally, 
If you click on the Autofix banner at the top here, or indeed on this help button, it will bring up the comprehensive help section, which should give you the answers to any questions you might have. So hopefully that's given you a good overview. Hawaii Autofix is available exclusively through Effects Factory, which means there's a free trial version for you to download and check it out right now. So thanks for watching.